it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 14 of my 2020 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Den Sweet Den and Christmas Dreams. So I've stamped my images out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on some Nina Solar White cardstock and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my bears and I'm going to make them polar bears because it's Christmas and polar bears are one of my very favorite animals. So for the mama bear I am using W00, W1, and W3. Started with that W3 and I'm going to lay in some shadows mostly down the right hand side of her body since that would be um, in the shadow in this particular scene but also just adding a little bit here and there on the left to make her look just a little bit more rounded and lift her off the page. And then I'll begin to blend that out with the W1. I am keeping those darkest two shades very close to the outline of the image because I still want her to look white. I'm not trying to make a gray bear here. I'm trying to make a white bear, but I just want there to be a lot of definition and uh, to have a lot of contrast on the image. So once I have that W1 kind of blended out there, I'll come in with the W00 and I'm going to soften that up but still leave quite a bit of white space. And that way, like I said, she's still going to look like a white polar bear. You could definitely color the muzzle to be white as well, but I wanted to have something just a little bit different on her. So I'm going to pull in the W5 and I'm going to use that to make kind of a darker gray black muzzle. So I'm using that W5 as my shadow and then blending out with the W3 and filling in with the W1. And then I'm going to do the baby bear to match off screen since he's uh, colored exactly the same. I also did the top and bottom of the fireplace with those warm grays. And now I'm switching over to cool grays and I'm going to attempt something different for the first time today. I'm going to try to color the tiles on the fireplace to look like marble. So I'm using C0, C1, C3, and C5. So I started out with the C1 and just added a little bit of shading on the right and bottom edge of each of those tiles. And now I'm coming in with the C5 marker and I'm just making some little lines and crevices and cracks. Um, just trying to make it have that random marbleized look and I'm not connecting each of the tile because they've all been cut apart so um, you know they don't necessarily connect and uh, so I'm just starting fresh on each tile there just tiny little dots and lines and then I'm going to start to blend over that with the rest of the shades so now I'm coming in with that C3 and kind of softening things up and getting that C5 to be just pushed back a little bit. Now I will say that if I were to do this different, I do like how it turned out, but if I were to do this again, I would have started with a few less of those squiggles and dots. I think if I would have had a little more white space, I would have liked the final result just a little bit more, but I definitely still am happy with the way that it turned out. So now I'm coming in with the C1 and I'm kind of coloring over uh, the tiles now and just getting them to push those lines and dots even further back into the background. I'm also coloring some of the tiles a little bit more than others because if you look at marble tiles, often some of them are just a little bit more gray colored than others. So that's the look that I was going for. And now I'm using that C0 to just push things back even further and give me that final marbleized look. And it does look a little bit darker right now as well, but as the markers dry back, you'll see how that really looks. I did decide to lighten a few of them by just coloring over a few of the tiles with the colorless blender. And all that's gonna do is push those other marker shades even deeper into the paper. And so it'll just be an even more uh, faded look. 
And then after taking a second look at it, I decided I didn't like the warm gray on the top and the bottom. I just felt like it didn't go with the rest of the marble. So I decided to color right over the top of the um, warm grays with the cool grays. And I ended up with kind of a different color gray that I really, really liked. And I thought went really well with those marbleized tiles. So um, I just went ahead and colored straight over that and it covered it up nicely. I also needed to color the inside of the fireplace. So I started with the C5 and put a shadow on the perimeter. And then I'm getting lighter and lighter as I get closer to those flames. And that way um, I can also color like a glow over top of that later on that the fire would be casting on the back of that fireplace. So then I finished blending out with the C1. I also colored the star on the Christmas tree and a few of the baubles with the warm grays and then the cool grays over top. I really liked that combination and I wanted to tie that in on another area of the card. So I went ahead and did that off screen and then I'm moving on to the Christmas tree and I wanted it to be like a blue spruce. So it was a little bit more teal in color rather than like a bright green. So I'm using BG72, BG75 and BG78. And I meant to start with the BG78, but I believe I accidentally started with the BG75. And I just laid in some shadow on the bottom edge of each of those little sections. And then also brought up the line from the scallop to um, just add a bit more depth there. And then... Um, now I'm going back over things with the BG75 again. I realized that, you know, just now that that was what I had used instead of the BG78. But that's okay. I'm just going to continue coloring. And then when I get to the second layer, which I will do off screen, I'll add in that BG78 for my darkest. So I'm going to just finish adding in this BG75 and then I'll begin to blend that out with the BG72 and because I only use those two shades it, there will be a little bit of a harsher transition between those areas um, but that's okay like I said uh, that's what the second layer is for that's just something that I often like to do I almost always I would say 95% of the time especially if it's a darker colored image um, I do do a second layer on my images. I did not do that for the polar bears since they were so light and I didn't want them to get darker. But um, anything that's going to be like a darker image that needs to have a lot of saturation, I'm going to do that second layer off screen. So you can see how that looks now. And I'm moving on to my red combo. I'm using R24, R29, and R39. Starting with the R39, I'm going to lay in some shadow on this little stocking here and just accentuate the curve in the toe there. Blend out with the R29 and fill in with the R24. I'll do the other little stocking on screen as well, just so you can see that again. Blending out with the R29 and then finishing with the R24. And then I'll color several of the other images that I want to be read off screen just to save you some more time in the video. Now I'm moving on to a brighter green combo. I'm using G43, G46, and G29 as the darkest. And I'm going to do a few more of those little Christmas baubles. And I will color some of the gifts and the coffee mug off screen trying to like bounce around and give you guys some ideas of different shaped images and different light sources. But I also don't want to uh, make the video too long for you. So that's why I do try to do at least a few of the images off screen just to save you some time. I'm moving on to a combo that is more of a cranberry red. That is R81, R83. R85 and R89. Now I don't believe I ended up using that R81. I um, 
thought that I had grabbed the R83, R85, and R89 to begin with, but I had uh, missed the R85 at first. Um, so I just left it there in case I would use the R81, but I don't believe I actually ended up needing it because I wanted a bit more of a vibrant combo. So I didn't need that lightest shade. So I started with the R89 on the rug and then blended out with the R85 toward the center and then filled in the middle with the R83. And then I'm also going to, well, I did use the R81 to color in the rosy cheeks for the little polar bears, that's right. And then I'll do some more images off screen there for you. And then I'm moving on to my Christmas tree trunk, which I'm using E25, E27, and E29 for that. Kind of doing the shadows in the same way that I did the tiles, kind of a reverse L on the bottom there. And then I'll also color in the log that is in the fireplace with those shades. And I added a few little lines across with those darker colors to give it a bit more texture. For the fire, I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18. And I also threw in a little Y17 to give it a bit more of a golden glow. I used that Y17 first, and then I came in with the YR12, kind of building up that color. I'm actually doing lightest to darkest for a change there. And then I pulled in the YR14 and then the YR18. And then for the glow that I mentioned earlier around that flame, I'm using the Y11 to just color right over that lightest of the cool grays that I had added there. I'll use BG10 to color in the milk glass and then E50 to add the milk in there, just a few quick swipes. And then for the cookies, I'm going to use E51 and E53. I just added a little shading at the bottom edge with that E53 and blended out with the E51. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. I'm going to stamp out my sentiment neck so that I can just set that aside for later. And I'm using Lawn Fawn's Cranberry Ink to stamp onto a piece of white cardstock. It's the same Nina that I used for my images. And it's the sentiment that says, Have a Berry Cozy Christmas, which is from Den Sweet Den. And then I'm going to pop my card base into my Misty. I'm using a piece of Dolphin cardstock and stamping in Hippo Ink. And I'm going to bring in the little bear from Den Sweet Den. And the sentiment is from Christmas Dreams along with that speech bubble. And then I brought in the Holiday Helpers stamp set to fill in the little speech bubble. And I really wanted to use the teddy bear, but it didn't fit. So I ended up having to go with this little cup of cocoa, which I thought was still cute. For my focal panel, I'm starting with another piece of that dolphin cardstock and the largest of the stitch dens. And I'm going to tape that into place with a bit of post-it tape and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I wanted to have some pattern paper behind it for the wallpaper in the room. So I'm going to use some uh, paper from the Let It Shine 6x6 collection. I really liked this pink with the tiny white polka dot. I thought that would be really pretty there. So I also die cut a piece of the wood grain cardstock for the floor and a white little strip for the baseboards. So I'm going to adhere the pink print down first to my card base and then I'll add that wood grain print right over top at the bottom. And then I'll take that thin white strip and I'm going to glue that right above the floor so it looks like a little baseboard there. I've added some foam tape to the back of the frame so I'm going to peel off those release papers and then I'm going to pop this up over top. That's just gonna give me a little bit more dimension and have the scene that I'm going to create be a bit recessed um, into the background, which I think is just a cute look for this card. It kind of um, draws your eye inward into their little home. 
So now I can start to add my images and I'm going to begin with the fireplace since that's kind of the biggest image um, or at least the widest and then the Christmas tree would be the other large image so that will be next and I'm going to put that over on the left hand side there. Then I'll take Mama Bear because she's quite large as well. I'm going to add a dot of glue to her belly and open up her little hands so that she can hold on to her mug because she's chilling after wrapping all the Christmas gifts. So I'll add some glue to the back of her and then she's going to go over on the far right side of that little scene. Then I'll take that carpet and I'm going to put that down in kind of the center of the room just in front of that fireplace. Kind of tuck it under her foot there too just to integrate it a little bit more into the scene. Next I'm going to decorate the fireplace by taking the milk and cookies and the letter for Santa and I'm going to add that way up on top of the mantle. And then for the little stockings, I'll just add a bit of glue to the back of those. And I'm going to hang one on either side of the fireplace. So I put the one that is solid red closest to the mama bear. Um, because she's holding that green mug, um, I put the one with the green heart on the opposite side just to spread that little pop of green around the scene. And then I have my little pile of gifts and I'm going to tuck that down in the bottom left corner right below the Christmas tree. And then of course my sweet little baby bear. I love him so much. So he has fallen asleep waiting for Santa and he's going to be dreaming of candy canes and all kinds of good things. So he's got his little candy cane tucked in his paw where he fell asleep. I trimmed out my sentiment with one of the everyday sentiment banners and I'm going to adhere that down at the bottom of the scene. So I just was getting it in position there, figuring out exactly where I wanted it and then I can add some liquid glue to the back of that. And then of course I have to finish off the card with some glitter. So I've grabbed my favorite Stardust Stickles. I love this stuff because it really looks great over anything no matter what color is underneath it. So I added some to my Christmas star and all of the little baubles. I'm going to add it to the ribbons on all of the gifts and also to the candy cane in the baby bear's hand and the whites of the stockings. And I even added it to the milk and to Mama Bear's little mug there. Um, I just love this stuff. I think it's so pretty and it just makes a Christmas card to me. It just doesn't feel complete without it. I also noticed that the mug was looking a little empty, so from one mother to another, I decided to top it off for her and give her a refill with an E25 marker. I just colored a little bit in because she is going to need it for the night and morning ahead. So I'll lift that up to the screen so you can see all of that beautiful sparkle and shine and give you another peek at the inside. And that is going to complete my card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really, really love how it turned out because I love polar bears so much. So if you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you'd like to keep watching, here is day 14 of the previous two years of holiday card series. You can also find all of the products that I used today listed and linked below the video. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.